wood is it's so different than paper um, in the sense that I think that wood absorbs your feelings, your soul. So when you're carving, whatever you're feeling at the time, it goes in, it goes in, you feel it, and it just, it gets absorbed by the tree, by nature, and it holds it in. It's kind of like if it was just a tree in the ground, and it absorbs the nutrients and everything else that's in the ground, and it, it goes up into the bark, into the branches, into the leaves. And so the same thing with this. I love this piece so much. It feels, I think I connect to this piece because that's what I felt like. Hola, buenos dias. Yo soy Astrid Beatriz. Hi, my name is Astrid Beatriz. I'm one of the artists here at the Portland Architectural Heritage Center exhibition from the Portland Indigenous Group. There's uh, several artists. We um, started it for the uh, um, acknowledgement of Oregon, uh, acknowledging people, Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, and I am fortunate to be one of the ones here. Um, welcome. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself as the artist, um, y como empezó todo. Um, I switched back and forth. I was born in El Salvador. Uh, y yo hablo español y depende con quien estoy is how my brain works. <laughs> so I actually wanted to show you how it all started and who I am and what it is that I do. I am actually a female woodworker and I started with mi abuelita. Esta es mi bisabuela. Her name was um, Dominga uh, Cermeño. We called her Mama Minga and she passed away at 104. But as a child, I remember her and a lot of how she felt to me um, and what she looked like. And it's, it was hard on me coming to this country when I was about five or six years old that I didn't have my grandmothers with me. Um, and so it was, here's my grandmother, Mamalita. Her name was Rafaela. And a lot of her was touching her and how I became a woodworker was this is the beginning of it. I needed something tactile, something to touch, something to remember, other than just memories that tend to fade when you're gone for so long. And they're, they, I don't have um, a funeral or burial place to go to. Uh, my family is in El Salvador. Bastante is, is tactile. Um, if for, for me, it was um, feeling her cheekbones and how she felt. And so much of my woodworking, you will see the details of that. You will feel it. If you close your eyes, you can actually still feel the way she was. I still remember it, and I have those curves in me. Um, and that's when you start to feel alone and you feel like no one's with you anymore, and you're missing part of your background, your heritage, your familia. Um, this is what I turn to. My mother brought, us, brought me when I was about five, six years old. Um, and it was in the early 80s. And for us coming here, it was an interesting experience. I did not know any English, uh, so I had to learn English. And I think my mom said, my first words were, hello. <laughs> and, and I said hello to everybody and everything. And that was my response to everyone. Um, when they'd ask me, what's your name? I'd say, hello. <laughs> and, um, but as we came here, she remarried um, and she married a Mexican man and she had two more children. So I have two other sisters. Um, but in the early 80s, it was a huge effort to make sure that you assimilate and that you conform and that you stay safe and that you make people comfortable. Um, and so a lot of it was lost. A lot of my heritage, a lot of my background was not enforced. Um, but my mother, thankfully, was strong enough that she would send me back to El Salvador every summer. And when I'd go back, I was put in school there and I was um, with my family and I learned quite a bit. So mi, mi bisabuela, I remember her um, as a child, we'd go visit her. <clears throat> And she had a sort of, I guess you would say a, a shack was her home. Um, and she had uh, huge tamarind trees uh, and hokote trees. 
and we would climb up them as kids and it was uh, whoever was unlucky to draw the straw had to, had to climb up and throw down the fruit um, for the rest of us. But she uh, was really short and she was a tiny, she lived to 104. And I, one of my favorite memories of her was uh, we'd come over and she's like, oh, I'll start making dinner. And we're like, no way, we will make dinner. You just sit down and relax. But she decided um, she wasn't gonna be told what she could do and what she couldn't do. And she refused any help. So she grabbed a little, uh, like a mid-sized chicken. It was still a baby chick. And she just grabbed it and and I remember seeing her, she goes, oh no, hold on. She grabbed it and she just immediately wrung it by its neck and then it was, it was dead. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was just playing with that chicken. <laughs> but it was fantastic because she, that's how she ate. She knew she didn't have the strength to kill a full uh, grown chicken. She needed tender meat, a soft, and she could prepare it all herself. She immediately plucked it off and stuck it in the boiling water and and she had her own dinner ready and that's how she took care of herself. Thankfully, she um, passed away in her sleep. Um, but I remember laying in that same bed um, made out of s straw or hay um, and I would listen in and she goes, Niña, vaya a dormirse, take a nap, una siesta. And I would lay in there, but it was so dark and I would hear, she had a rattlesnake in the top of her <laughs> house and it would, I would lay there and I'm like, oh my gosh. And you'd hear it. And I was like, and I remember that sound so, so strongly. And that's probably why I leaned towards um, the snakes in here because I was deathly scared of snakes at that time. I don't know why I had never been bitten by one, but it was fantastic um, just listening to it. Now I can say it's fantastic, but as a kid, I was, I was mortified going, oh my God, it's gonna come down. Um, but it didn't, thankfully, and uh, she would say, oh, tss, niña, no le tenga miedo, don't be scared, she would say, it's fine, he keeps the rats away, and um, I mean, she was just like that, they, she wasn't scared of anything, and uh, until she passed on, she didn't want anybody to visit to help, uh, she could do everything herself, and so I take strength from that, that's got to be in my blood somewhere a sort of an intarsia style um, only because I cut out every single piece and with a scroll saw and then I take my knives and I shape every piece um, and to do that you take every single one of these and you shape it with your knives and then you sand it smooth you stain it you paint it and you put it all back together and then you back it for me I can feel her lips I could feel the bags under, under her eyes and her ears and how smooth her hair was. Um, so this is the best piece I have um, for me. So when I start to feel lonely and I can also share this with my daughter who did not get to meet her. Um, and so she knows who she was and she can put together the stories that I tell of my family, of the, the women who provided me with the background and the strength to still be here. So each one of these pieces, um, they're called the Indios de Mis Sueños for a reason. Each one started off in chalk drawings um, and that's how they came about. When I wake up and I, I just can't sleep anymore um, and I need to find strength, they come in the, in the way of a soldier, uh, mis soldados, mis indios, and I will sketch them out and do them in chalk and um, paint them. And when I'm ready with them, Sometimes it might take me a little bit of time to be able to come back to them. But when they are, then I'll, I will turn them into a wood carving um, and make them. So I think for me, in my mind, the, <clears throat> the soldiers and the Mayan ancestry really comes to me to talk to me and tell me, this is what's going on and this is how you need to deal with it. Um, sometimes when you're going through the roughest part of your life and you think, I, this is never going to end. You, so, you know, sometimes you're in a nightmare and you think either, either it's stress or it's sickness or it's, it's um, whatever's happening at work or with your family and you think, uh, this, 
I feel like I'm, I'm stuck in it and it's never going to end. Is it ever going to? And I think for me, when I felt like that, I had to remember that there is a time, there are certain things that are fixed, sunrise and sunset. Sunrise, you can count on the sun always coming up. And that's how this one came about. Each sunrise is a new opportunity. Each sunrise is a representation that you can start over. And you can try again. And this, this Indio, I have as mine. And you can tell that the sunrise from the headdress. Um, and all of these are bright colors. And this was the representation. And again, you'll see this um, in the shape of it is actually my husband's guitar, because he makes guitars. Um, he's a luthier and that's what keeps me safe so as long as I draw within them that's how I feel and that's him surrounding me and letting me be who I am and this is a representation for me to remind myself that it's not always going to be like that and every day you can make a change there's also my anxious warrior this is this is how I see myself at times, where you have to just smile and you may not necessarily feel that happy, you know, but people want to see you smile. And um, <clears throat> I don't know how many times in my life I've been told, Astrid, you're way too serious. Esta muy seria. You don't play. Uh, no te gusta esto. No te gusta aquello. And so I turn and I have to smile and I'll put on that smile, but it's not really the real smile. Um, but it's what's going to make other people happy. And this piece came about because I dropped off my daughter at, at college. And I remember she said, Mom, you can go, but I don't want you to talk. I don't want you to do anything else. Just, just be there. And, um, and so I had to smile the entire time and just pretend everything was OK. And oh my gosh, I'm dropping off my first child off at college, and she's going to go away. Uh, and then when I came back home, the night after I dropped her off, this appeared to me in a dream. And so I drew it. This is the Serpent Soldier. This one, I love the colors and everything else. Again, you'll see um, I cut out every single piece with my scroll saw and I shape it with my knives and um, it's got a serpent on there. I guess you can say that the serpent really, that rattlesnake on atop my great-grandmother's house has really come into play. Uh, I didn't even put the two together really, um, but this one is determined and um, the serpent soldier, it's when you have, the serpent has certain powers, certain inherent um, strength that sometimes you have to pull out. And I see it in my dreams and I, to me it represents, I have that strength, but I have to find it and I have to use it. But how am I going to use it? So if you're gonna be that vessel for anything, what kind of a vessel are you gonna make? If you, everyone, if there's a 10 of us you know, lined up and each of us have the same power, how are each of us going to use it? So you have to make that conscious decision sometimes in life when you wake up and you think, what am I doing here? How am I going to help? How am I going to make a difference in life in, in this world? Who do I want to be? How do I want to be remembered? I've made mistakes, lots of them, but I also want to know <clears throat> that I'm strong enough to stand up for others. And when things are wrong, to stand up for myself, which is the hardest thing to do because I'm good at standing up for everybody else. I'm not very good at standing up for myself. Um, so this is one of them. And sometimes you look at them and you think, I wanna be like that soldier I dreamt about. You may not feel like it, but that's who you wanna be. And so when I see them in my walls, I see them in my dreams, I'm reminded that I do have that strength. I have to just put it out there and be strong enough so that others 
can see that and know that I will not be defeated. And I can still be me, even if they don't like it. And I can still help others. And my daughters can see that through my own actions. I'm determined and I'm not gonna lose this. My grandmothers didn't do it. I'm not gonna do it. I may be alone here, sin mi gente. Maybe no family. But I carry it within me. And I think that that counts for any of us, no matter what color you are or background. You have it. There's something in there. So don't lose it. And when you think you're at the end of your rope, and you think nothing more can possibly damage you, just remember of sunrise. Because I did. And when things were at the worst, el sol sale. El sol va a salir todos los días. And I'm going to be there to watch that sunrise. Simple as that. Gracias.